to you by the wicked and wicked correlation. For the 12 times scandal worldwide. Really had dark skin, son of the most high, yeah. Son! Just try it. It's okay. It's alright. Nah. Yeah. It's alright. Oh. to the 12 tribes of Israel scatter. Why we scatter? Y'all already know, worldwide. Yes, that mean the four corners of the earth, Zion. Waking up to truth in these last days. Living in some of the most exciting times when we see the prophecy, biblical prophecy, of our Holy Bible jumping off the pages. Just jumping off the pages, just. <laughs> and you know what I have to say to that is hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And to all of you, my father's children, shalom, shalom. I am Dr. Yoshiahu Dawid Ben Israel Moray at the Awakening Remnant Coalition. We're about our father's business. Seeking the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Finding them and telling them who they are and who they are. Reminding them and informing them that we are in a covenant. And that the Elohim of our covenant is soon to return to gather his covenant people. Back to himself. It's almost over. Oh, yes. Now, Zion, I got to say some things. And I'm not going to, I can't keep you too long. But we are living in the days 
that the Bible says is the end. All through scripture, we hear our prophets. These are my cousins. Some of them may be my grandpa. They say, in the latter times, in the end times, in the last days. And we read these verses over and over where it says, you'll understand this in the last days. This will happen in the latter times. This will happen in the last days. In the last days. And during the last days. Now, in the last days. <laughs> and that theme runs through the whole Bible, which means something, Zion. There, are, there, there is a such thing of the last days. <laughs> There is a such thing of the end. And we're here. This is the end. And I'm excited about it. So many things happening. Watch. I'm looking at this text today, and I'm looking at the Bible, and I'm looking at what's going on and how so many... Look. Let me just start out by saying this. Is, listen to me, he is Hebrew centric. <laughs> Maury, there you go, making up word. Okay, okay. Yah is Israelite centered. Okay. You make it up word more of it. There you go again. No, I mean, y'all's kind of like focused. So who we focus? Well, based on the script, it seems as though the scriptures are very clear when it say he focused on us. I mean, there's words like, I chose you to be mine. There's words like, apple of my eye, who touched you, touched the apple of my eye. There's words like, ah, only is your have I known. <laughs> Don't do that more. No, 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 really. There's words like that. Like, like, like his eyes are is always his eyes are always on us. His focus is us. His concern is us. Fear not, little flock. His focus is us. Not one. Not, not, not one bird falls to the ground that our Heavenly Father don't take note of and know you much more valuable than birds now. He knows you down to the very hairs of your head numbered. Hebrew-centric. Israelite-centric, which is bad news for that heathen. Based on how you treated us, oh my. Because you were wicked to us. Now, of all the time I've been out here setting up, I ain't heard not one person 
do nothing. It was completely quiet. As soon as I started preaching, here come the heathen want to cut his lawn. <laughs> want to fire up lawnmowers and carry it on. All day you got to cut the grass, all morning, all evening. You went to the mower and started preaching. Then here you go, want to run your mower. It ain't going to stop the message. No, we've dealt with worse <laughs> distractions than this. He's focused on us. Who is? Yeah. So if you want to understand the Bible, you've got to understand and find us. Because the Bible is about us. It's about our journey. It's about how we got here. It's about our covenant with the Most High. It's about how we were separated from the rest of the world. It was, which is, which is our word holy, watch. It was also how we had the greatest privilege that any nation has ever had. And that is we were able to go in covenant with Almighty Yah. And going into covenant with Yah being the greatest privilege of all human beings. Believe it or not, our ancestors, they took it lightly as some light thing. And they held our Elohim, Yahuwah, in contempt. And therefore, the curses in the verses became a reality. So much so, for the most part, if you can get someone to sit down long enough and just read one chapter about them blessings and curses and think about us when they read it, Deuteronomy chapter 28, they'll say, oh yeah, that's exactly what happened to y'all. And it's still happening to you right now to this day. Oh yes, it is. But the nation whose hand was used to persecute us must be judged. That's in the covenant. That's in Genesis. That's in Exodus. That's in Deuteronomy. That's in Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah. It's in every, every single prophecy. Oh, yeah. Now, y'all going to use the heathen to punish you. But then afterwards... Yah is going to judge the heathen and bring them down. To what? To nothing. That's how this book ends. Now we're watching things unfold. Y'all have no idea. I'm in a quiet place normally. I got a lawnmower over here. I got the loudest aeroplane that, they, that ever was allowed to fly in the United States of America flying overhead. What I'm trying to teach. <laughs> oh, no, they don't want me to tell the world, but I got to tell the whole world. I have to tell the world. It's over. Y'all saw the thumbnail. The end of the world. I've been dealing with this. I can't go back into this right now. But I've been telling you all. This ain't no joke right here. 20 years ago, we would not even have known what this was. A handful of people may have, but the majority of us had no idea what this was. But before it happens, guess who knows what this is? I've, I've been watching Hebrews all over the world, Israelites, waking up to the truth. They're going, oh, I know what that is. That's the Aleph, and that's the Tile. Yes, you're correct. But you know them heathen don't know that. All those studies that's coming out and everybody getting so excited and everybody uh, buying glasses and taking trips and want to be in the pathway of the top. Which way? Yeah. They want to be in the pathway. They going to stay in hotel rooms and stuff like that. They have no idea. <laughs> they don't know what this is, but we know what this is. This is judgment. It's coming. It's the Aleph Tav. 
Now I gotta go back and, and do some more videos on that. So I'm not gonna stay on that. But April the 8th, if these heathens are correct in tracing this eclipse, it will complete a tile, which is the end of the world. Um, I should, I'm sorry, which is the sign of the covenant. And it will also make the Aleph. And we know that our king is Aleph Tav. That's who he is. All right? We'll get into that a little bit more later because I still have some more things I want to talk about that covenant. Then I told you all that Abaya, after waking me up to the truth, over 13 years ago now. Put me on a path. Man, I am already 16 minutes. I haven't even told y'all. Can you see the moon ray all right? Can you hear me okay? <laughs> Everybody put a 12 in here for the 12 tribes of Israel. Please place a 12 in the chat for the 12 tribes of Israel. Let me just make sure this transmission is going all right. Okay. Hallelujah for them 12. I went on this journey and almost lost everything. Now, to some of y'all, that might not mean much. But you know my story, pastor in the church, the whole nine yards, involved in all the wickedness that there is to be involved in when it comes to that so-called Christian church. I was just on the phone not too long ago with one of the brothers that was with me who now walking in truth. And we started talking about how we didn't even realize when we were growing up that we were in a covenant with wickedness. When we walked, when we, back in the day, do y'all know, you know, when I started talking about the covenant, you know, people start saying, man, I don't know where you call this word covenant. I don't understand it. You know, I always get the naysayers and everybody want to want to comment on what the Maury got to say all over the world. I'm used to it. Then they want to sound like the more. I'm already used to it. But watch this. Everybody who grew up in a Christian church when I was growing up, the first thing they do, they said that you would get saved by white Jesus, a white European named Jesus. Not a black savior, Yehoshua Hamashiach from the tribe of Judah, no, a blonde hair, blue eyes, Caesar Bourget image that you had to just say some words and you will say. All I had to do is say, white King Jesus, Lord, come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of my sins. And then you was in for the rest of your life. They was a lie and a wonder. There ain't nobody coming up out of Europe. Nobody that come out of JFAF. It's going to be the savior of Yah's people. Our king come up out of Yahudah. Once you said that, then what they would do is they would have you learn what was called the church covenant. Now, why did these heathens believe it's necessary to make you go into a covenant? Ain't that something? See, we didn't think about it in those days. We didn't understand it. But that whore, the whore of Babylon, I've been telling y'all, I found out, when I found out who the whore of, the, of, of Babylon was, which is the, the universal Catholic church. Oh, I know y'all don't believe them already yet. You will. Every world religion is under that. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's Judaism, Islam, uh, Christian. Everything connects. And when you read the history of all the world religions, they have all got a connection right there. Some kind of way. I proved it in, in previous videos. Watch. How come every time a person got saved, so quote unquote, the very next step was to put them in a covenant. 
You had to learn what was called the church covenant. And you know what you had to do? You had to stand up in front of the whole entire congregation. And somebody don't believe me, but that's fine. But if y'all know the more ain't lying, I need somebody to testify. What can I get? If you know the more is not lying, put a 100 in the chat. I just want the world to know, you know what? What he's saying is true. They had a covenant on the wall. And, and you had to stand in front of that covenant. And you had to recite it. It had a bunch of things in there. Ha, having been led as we believe by the spirit of the Lord and Savior, white Jesus Christ from Europe, Caesar Borgia images, upon the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God and this assembly most joyfully and wonderfully, or whatever the hell it was, enter into the covenant with one another as one body in white Jesus. They made us go into a covenant. So we were in a covenant relationship with the whore of revelation. Fulfilling the apocrypha books 100%. Fulfilling our prophets who said we went into covenant with Babylon. We went into covenant with Asheroth and Baal. Our people were so ignorant we went into covenant with our slave, uh, with the slave owner and master's religion. And then we passed it down. What is that called? Stockholm syndrome. So even when the white man wasn't around, we still had our, our children going into covenant with a white image. Believing that that white image was the son of God, which means if God's son is white, then God is white. And you niggas is Gentiles. Don't forget it. And then, wait a minute, I just was reminded. And then at the end of that covenant, you know what it says? And I don't, I, I can't quote it correct, and I'm hope y'all take, I don't want to quote it at all. But you know the end of that thing said, and we further engage, therefore, or whatever we say, that if, that, as soon as we leave this place, we will unite with another congregation that believes exactly like this. That's what it says. That's how it ends. So that we can carry out the spirit of this covenant. That's what it says. And imagine this. Then the moon ring, I come on and I say, hey, our people are already in a covenant. Our, our foreparents put us in a covenant. Covenant? That sounds like an old testament. Covenant? Oh, no, man. We ain't got to deal with that no more, you know. But then yet, yeah, you got to think back. But then someone put you in a covenant and made you recite it. Whew. Therefore, Zion, we must, re in the last days, this is it. It's over. In the last days, we must renounce it. We must stand up boldly and say, I renounce the covenant with Caesar Bourget images. I renounce the covenant I made with white supremacy. I renounce the covenant I was made with some wicked Christian church. I renounce the covenant with the people who get ready to celebrate a day named after the demon Estarte. I, I denounced the covenant. I denounced all that. I, I, hey, I did it in ignorance. I denounce my relationship with that organization and system of wickedness, which according to the Bible is Mystery Babylon. Now, if y'all understood that, put a 500,000 in this chat, please. More than 500,000 already? Oh, yes. Let's make sure that we getting this 100%. We're about to go home, and we cannot be joined to our Elohim Yahuwah and then in some kind of weird European covenant at the same time. The prophet said, no, break the covenant with the heathen and be restored to the covenant of your fathers. Our fathers made a covenant with Abayah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. We already know it. Who are they? 
Hebrews. Then the children of Israel, which are called what? Israelites. All of us in a covenant. You know what? I'm, I'm, I was so excited to get into this message today. <laughs> I forgot to tell you all, thank you for your support. And I and, and forgot to encourage you, if you're in the chat room and if you're watching the video and being encouraged by it, send a donation to the ARC. Awakening Remnant Coalition. There's several ways to do it. You can send it straight. Uh, if they're in the chat, they're in the description, on the website. We appreciate what you do. We're full-time. And if you appreciate that and want to keep us full-time, send a donation. We, we, we really do uh, appreciate it. All right. So now, let me, let me talk about, I got to move off the covenant for a moment. And told our about for those of you who care now, to keep us uh, full time. Now let me move off this uh, idea of a covenant just for a second and talk about some of the things that are happening that are in the covenant, in our real covenant. One of the things that Abaya says about the real covenant is that in the last days, he would begin to restore his people. It's in the covenant. It's not a sidebar thought. It's not something that's random that we just coming up with. As I said um, yesterday, um, we're not, this, this is not magic. This is reading the covenant and then telling the people this is what's in your covenant. So the awakening of the house of Israel is not, is not accidental. It's a fulfillment of what has been already written in our covenant. I began to wake up to truth and I had a church. Had Actually, I lost two churches behind that. But I'm not going to get into that. And one was a mega church. Y'all already know that. And I ended up having to go into like a weird place of study, which uh, I was talking to one of, one of my uh, brothers that I hadn't seen in a long time. And he mentioned that... Uh, Sometime you got to go to Brook School. <laughs> I'll get to that later. But he was one of the men that I, I had the privilege of, of reconnecting with. And it's a weird place when you when you go to Brook School. If you don't know the story of, of uh, Elijah, you may not get that reference. But there was a time where he had to just, you had to go and get away from everybody so that you could learn what Yah wants to teach you. And at the time, I didn't have a peer group that I could go to to learn Hebrew. No, it ain't like it is today. We're just like the, the Awakening Remnant Coalition. You know, when we started, there wasn't a whole lot of groups like this. Now, there were some, some campers out there doing some things, but I'm talking about people who weren't caught up in, like, camp doctrine. There was just hardly nowhere to go. Now there's several places that people can go and learn the scriptures and learn Hebrew and things like that. But at that time, I didn't have a core group so therefore it was like uh sort of being out you know kind of alone by a brook and that's what I, that's what it is, is that y'all have to give it to you you have to learn how to trust him and as a result um the reason why i'm sharing this is because in that world that i was in i basically lost everything which is cool I'm glad about it now when I look back. But during the time I had to lose it, man, it was a difficult thing. Now, fast forward 13 years, and the world is waking up to some things. And even these preachers and these pastors are starting to realize something. Number one, organized religion as we know it, like regular church, is dead. It's been dead. You know, there's a there's a there is a congregation in the Bible called Sardis. <laughs> That's a group of, of Israelites. They think they're alive, but they dead. That is the condition. They go through the motions and there's still two or three old folk hanging on, but for the most part, it's dead. And at the same time, people are waking up to truth. I want you to understand that. And so I ask you all, I said, you all, I get an opportunity to speak to some people 
very powerful men, very influential men concerning Hebrew. And I just want to say this. It went well. I, I don't know what's getting ready uh, to happen, but I already have prayed and asked Abaya as an instrument in his hand. He may have he may have risen me up and had me go through all that I went through for such a time as this. What time? The end time. He, he may have had to teach me these things that I might be able to share what he has taught me with the leadership. And maybe there will be others that will come out of the covenants of wickedness. And these leaders, if they begin to come out of these covenants of wickedness that they've got into, even when they were children, just like we got into them, we were children, then there could be a hope for the remnant that they're leading. But unless they leave and you got these folk that's caught up in church, unless the leaders understand it and begin to preach it, there's so many folk are not going to move. Because they've been trained their whole life. Just follow your pastor, whatever your pastor say. And I try to tell these people, y'all have no idea what kind of power you have over the people. And what type of greater condemnation will be in the judgment. If you have made yourself a preacher and a teacher and you lead the people astray. Now that's willingly or unwillingly. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. That's knowingly and unknowing. Now there was a time where you might not have known, but today there's no excuse to be ignorant of, of, uh, of the Bible, of our covenant. Uh, we're learning the language. We're learning how it is put together. We're learning. So we're getting insight. So I don't know where Abaya is going to continue to take me when it comes to that. But I'm grateful that I had an opportunity to at least share that as Abaya wakes us up in these last days, um, he is starting to turn some of the people that are very influential that's still connected to the so-called Christian church, starting to at least turn their attention toward the Hebrew. And that's really, a, once you start seeing it from the Hebraic perspective, it's just a very, it's a matter of a very, sh a short amount of time. When you're going to do like everybody else, you're going to be like, wait, wait, wait. So this is this. Mm -hmm. And the Shabbat is Sheva. Mm -hmm. Not the first day. Nope. Oh, wow. And the diet law. Yeah, it's not done away with part of coming. And these are seven feast days, yes. We don't have to follow the pagan feast days. We have our own. And each of them point to our king, Yehoshua. And, and, and the journey begins. <laughs> it's a long journey. But there has to be a starting point. And I thank Abaya um, for giving uh, me and others the opportunity to maybe help a few more Israelites on their beginning journey to who we are biblically and who we and whose we are. All right. So um, I got a couple more things I want to share. Y'all know I met with them on Purim. And I, I didn't even put the two and two together until I got ready to do a little speech on Purim. And then I said, wow, maybe we are raised for such a time as this. You know, when you start getting close to the end and they start talking about eclipses that going to make olives and tithes and the heathen saying this ain't going to be like no other eclipse we ever seen. And you see the wars and rumors of war and you, you see the destruction of our families and you see the degradation of our neighborhoods and you... You see the decline in the churches and you see the rise in sickness and diseases and and you see wars and rumors. Maybe Yah's talking to these people saying, hey, hey, you know what? Maybe we need to find out what this book is about from the Hebraic perspective. And hallelujah, I'm one of the people that they feel comfortable enough with to say, hey, man, let's talk. 
And I'm, I'm, I am I'm pray that the work that Abaya has called me into and the study and all, everything that's gone into it, I pray now that it's be used, what? To help wake up Jacob. That's the whole point. To continue to help wake up Jacob. And prayerfully turn to their true identity before it's everlasting too late. Now, if they don't turn, at least I would have been a witness. Now, I'm going to move to my next point. If y'all understand that, put a 700,000. Let's go to the next point on this, uh, in this uh, study today. Let's go to the next point. I got a little time. Um, I talked about Putin in them pictures yesterday. I didn't have any of the paper. Look. <laughs> look at my skin and look at his skin. <laughs> I told y'all. Putin's going to tell it, didn't I? And here he's standing with some orthodox person. Now, that is a white man. This ain't no white man. This is a white man. This is a white man. This ain't no white man. <laughs> Let me say it again. This is a white man. This is a white man. This is not a white man. Now, I think I told y'all that they said there were hundreds of thousands, maybe over 500,000. I was watching a, um, an, arc, an old video on these pictures here. I'm talking about of years ago. This was before he said, open the vault and let them out. And... A white European reporter, she wasn't even talking English. There was a translator. And she was talking in Russian, obviously. And she said, listen to this. She said, there's millions. Now, I told y'all 500,000. But a few years ago, she said, no, there are millions of these pictures. And they were all over the world. She said, but because... And she said, because, I'm, I'm paraphrasing what she said. She said, because of white supremacy, these images were lightened up over time. She said, uh, and some of them, you know, they were so stuck that, that the Messiah had to be white that they actually started scraping, like trying to scrape layers, <laughs> trying to scrape the dark layers because they thought that the paint had actually darkened over time. Ain't that something? They actually thought that the paint had darkened over time. They had to come up with a way to try to lighten the faces. They couldn't do it. Then they realized something. You know what? First of all, it's a million of these pictures. We can't do all million. <laughs> and then years later, those vaults are open. And these pictures are going on display, not just this one. I just picked this one to show you that Putin ain't got no problem with us. And I also picked this picture because y'all can see the similarities in skin tone. Because sometimes we're so blind that we can have eyes and still can't see. So somebody got to show it to you. This is a white man. This is a depiction of Hamashiach, who ain't no white man. What does that mean then, Moray? It means what we've been telling you. That the bloodline descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is us. I had an opportunity to share this not too long ago. I've been sharing this for a while. But I shared, uh, because I just assume, you know, everybody's doing the deep, you know, the kind of studies that we are. It's not true. You know, people, they doing other things. When I mentioned about the slave coast to some people, um, 
they didn't know that the name of those places was like Ben Ami. And they didn't know that it was like Kingdom of Benjamin. And another coast was called Waida. But then it's written on another map, Kingdom of Judah. They didn't know that. And I said, you know, I just left. I was with the good doctor and uh, um, alumni of uh, Stanford University who thought it would be good for me to see it. And she took me up there. And I got a chance to lay eyes on the actual maps. So yes, they're there. And yes, there, it wasn't no secret to nobody back in the day who they were enslaving. They were in in a, cons a confederacy, according to, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, they were in a confederacy fulfilling the Psalm 83 and others. And they all decided that they would participate in the slave trade. And because they enslaved us, they knew that their nations were going to be the greatest nations in the world, and they are. They tried to enslave other people. It didn't work. But when they enslaved us, they didn't just become world powers. The nations that enslaved us became world superpowers. Powers that no wealth, power that no other nations could even remotely stand up to us. Which brings me to this again. This is why the X is going across. We were here 400 years fulfilling the scripture. We were in the nation that was known for slavery for 400 years, exactly what the scriptures say, fulfilling the Bible 100%, and the nation did become great. And they did say, we ain't giving you Negroes a nickel, dime, a quota, shut up about that reparation thing. And yes, we'll give anybody else, we won't give, we'll give much money they want. But when it comes to y'all, don't even talk about it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get some stepping fetches to work, on, work with us and tell y'all that you don't even need it. Because you should be happy we brought you over here and gave you white, white Cesar Borgia images to bow down to and white churches and white covenants and this white language and a white last name and a white first name. and You go to white schools, you're going to sing white songs. few years ago, I've been preaching this a long time, a few years ago, one of our brothers, and I don't even know if he's conscious to the fact that he's an Israelite, he said, I'm, I'm not going to stand up for a national anthem. that talks about the, the, that talks about the perpetuity, the, uh, when it continues forever, perpetuity. Can't even say it, I'm too excited. I'm not gonna deal with that. I, I'm not gonna, the continuation of slavery and indentured servants, and things, eh, I don't think I should be doing that. Especially when they keep shooting us and killing us and robbing us and there's all kind of violence and and you know I talked to some to some watch this some navy and marines and army people. I talked to some military people and I said, what do y'all do when something is happening that uh, you don't necessarily agree with in the country, 
without making a big scene about it, without making a big deal about it. And they told him, they said, well, normally what we do, one, we'll either lower the flag, we lower it to let people know something's going on here, something bad, something sad. They call it half mass. It means it, we, something is bad. Or we kneel instead of stand when it comes to like the national anthem or something. We'll take a knee. And by taking a knee, it just means that we still for the country. We still for everything, but there is something that's bothering us. So the brother said, well, I ain't got the power to lower the flag to half mass. How about this? Then I'll just take the kneel part. And these heathens took what he did and ran with it and said he hated America. He hated the military. He hated everything. I said, I said, that's not what he said. He never said that. But see, we do have an Elohim. Wait, 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 hold on, Moray. Don't do it like that. We'd be hollering too much. Ah. But we do have an Elohim. That's, wait, wait, huh? Wait, hold on now. We don't have a king for us. We don't have an earthly king. We ain't got a president. We don't have a police force. We don't have none of that. We don't have, we don't have that. We don't, we, we, we don't have our own legislation. <clears throat> We don't have our own Supreme Court. We don't have anything like that. What do we have? We just got to take it. Whatever they tell us and all of the shame and all of the, you know what I mean? We got to bear it. Now, whatever they say about us, we got to believe it. But what they don't know, that I've been knowing, is that there is an Elohim. What did he do? He said, hi, though. But how does he look? He looked down. And where is he looking? What was he? Who is he looking at? He looking at us. And how y'all, the world, the wickedness in this world, how y'all treating us. This came across my phone this morning. What is that, Moray? Huh? Moray, what is that? You can't see that? Let me try to hold it still. Can you see that? Now, this is for educational purposes only. It's fair use. Anybody in the chat know what this is? Somebody says in Baltimore. Another person said the bridge. But what makes it so? What ma <laughs> it's in the chat. It's in the chat. Of all the bridges that got hit by a barge. Now I told you in the last day. This one get hit by none other than this. This ugly, dirty, nasty, stinking slaver named Francis Scott Key. This bridge, known as the Key Bridge, is really named after Francis Scott Key. Murray, why you say he, he's a dirty, nasty slaver? Because he owned slaves himself operated in human traffic, hated the idea of freeing them niggas, had his way with our women and our children, and believed that if you were born into slavery, you should die. And when he wrote the national anthem, it was about Killing, bloodshed, bond. It wasn't about love and prosperity. It was about being powerful enough to keep them niggas in their place and being strong enough to not let anybody 
threaten us about what we want to do with the niggas. And if you try it, we'll bust them bombs right in the sky. And when it's all said and done, who cares about how many people are dead? Who cares about how many people are maimed, blind, parts missing, on crutches, wheelchairs? Never can operate one, operate normal again. Who cares? As long as our flag is still standing. He going to hell for that. A flag? So it's about, and then, and let me tell you something that they do to us. They always do it to us. I've been telling y'all this for a long time. It's mockery. Then they make a Negro sing it. Ain't that some sh Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Then they make us sing it. Mother, you just talking. You just talking. You think I'm just talking? I know y'all think I'm just talking. It's time out. Somebody said 2024 is the time that the truth gets going to come out. How about this? The Maury downloaded the, the whole lyrics to the song. All the lyrics. They only sing one stanza. One verse. But I got them all. They make you sing this. Think about it. This is the song that, that they got us singing. And we be wanting to do it. Listen. I'm going to go down. Y'all already know um, about what he's talking about fighting, right? Where he says, land of the free and the home of the brave. He ain't talking about you. But I'm going to go down the verse, uh, to his third stanza. Let's read this in front of the whole world. So y'all understand uh, why when they play this song, the Moray ain't standing. And I ain't getting on no one knee neither. What you going to do then? I'm going to sit in my seat. That's what I'm going to do. I came to watch the game. I didn't come here to reaffirm no slavery. I know you got my cousin singing it. He don't know no better. I wish I would have got to you, to my cousin before you did. I'd have asked him, man, how much they paying you to do the national anthem? Man, they're going to they're gonna give me $500. I tell you what, man, don't sing it. I'll just give you the 500 How about that? Save your dignity, I. Right? Your grandparents wouldn't have done that. Your ancestors wouldn't have did it. Let's read it. Fair use. Are you, uh, you know what I mean? Fair use. I'm just quoting. This, this, this has been out so long. Public domain. And where is that ban who so violently swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more? I said, where is that person? Who says that they're going to take away what we got? Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. What? Oh, yeah. No refuge could save the hireling and slave. No refuge could save the hireling and slave, do you see it? Before you be talking about Marvin always putting a 10 on a two, trying to be spectacular. No, I'll just tell the truth. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. Did you see it?
Try to run away if you want to. You ain't got nowhere to go. Everybody's saying that that that, that we're gonna have to get rid of slaves and servant men. Y'all can go somewhere. Ain't no refuge for y'all. Nowhere. And the star-spangled banner in triumph doth wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. Oh boy. <laughs> so no, more Yoshiahu that we been in Israel will not be standing and saluting a song that tell me ain't no hope for me. And tell me anybody who gets to talking like some kind of way, uh, my freedom is gonna be taken away and I ain't gonna never get it back. Okay, well then, guess what? I just won't sing that particular song. Now, don't get it twisted. I ain't, I'm, I ain't protesting nothing. I have a right to say, I would like to sing this song. But I don't want to sing this particular song. There's a whole lot of songs that Moray don't sing. So don't take that personal. I want, I want all the sneak listeners to know. I don't sing a lot of songs that I don't think line up with who I am and whose I am. And this is one of them. Now let's see whether or not, let's see what happened to the slaver and his song. Do you know that do you know that in Baltimore, they had a bridge over a mile? See, I'm from the West Coast, so I don't know everything. I don't know much about the East Coast. And uh, do you know I'm talking about the timing of it. It just got destroyed. By what? A tanker. From where? <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all figure that one out. Where else do we get all our all this junk from on these cargo ships? Where you think this thing came from? It's a whole nother subject I'm not getting into today. When that thing fell apart, it, it ran on every news. When that thing fell, fell apart, there it is, Francis Scott Key Bridge. I said, that's nobody else but you. Yeah, that's our, our Heavenly Father did that. Tore up that bridge. He allowed that to happen. Why? Vindication. Everybody now is going back to focus on who was that wicked heathen that this bridge was named after? And what did he do? What kind of person was he? What did he write? And why were we treated so bad when we decided we didn't want to sing his song? And I, by Yah's patient and kind, and gave them heathens a chance to repent. But unrepentant they are, it's a symbol. Y'all got to watch the signs. The symbol and the sign of a nation is their national anthem. And to bring attention to the national anthem to show its wickedness toward us right before the Aleph Tav, the Tav is written across the nation, right after Putin showed the whole world that the true Israelites are the, are the sons and daughters of the slaves, right at that time, that we return into who we are and whose we are. He got a foreign cargo ship. Hit that bridge. Hit a landmark. Trying to wake up everybody. Waking up everybody to what? 
his judgment. Go to Revelation chapter 18. Oh, I'm already over time. Go to Revelation. The book of the Revelation. Chapter 18. I'm going to get out this room. When you get there, it's going to say something like this. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from the Shamayim having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen. It's fallen. Yes, this nation is about to worship Babylonian gods this so-called Sunday. They're going to have folks showing up early in the morning with their face to the sun and their back to the temple, worshiping the rising of the sun, leading our people. And I kept wondering, why are our people so stuck in that and they can't get out? It's because they're in a covenant. They're in a covenant with Babylon. That's why they're getting ready to participate in Easter coming up this week. But it's fallen, it's fallen, and become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit. Ain't that here? Ain't that what we see? And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Ain't that what we see? For all nations, wait, no, son, no, no, no. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from Shamayim saying, come out of her. Come out of her, my people. And be not partakers of her sins. Why? And that you receive not of her plague. For her sins, I'm telling y'all, this is all falling in place. For her sins have reached unto heaven. Oh my. And Yah has remembered her iniquity. Who? Yah have remembered her iniquities. Do you hear that? United Snakes and all the other places that had slaves, you hear that? Yeah, you act like you want to forget, but y'all haven't forgotten. So what should happen? Verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you. What does that mean? She didn't give us nothing. It's going to be doubled in with her. She treated us bad. It's going to be, she's going to be treated double bad. What about the lying and the stealing and the killing and all that? It's going to be double. The whipping and the beating, the pain and the suffering, it will be double. Reading the Holy Bible now. I ain't making this up. And double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. I got to Our king is coming. And the signs are everywhere now. We got to come out of Babylon. And turn to him before it's everlasting too late. I got to go. Support the work of the art. 
especially in these last days. Keep us full time. Keep us about our father's business. Brought to you by the Wicked and Rich Correlation. We're gonna let the world know. Oh yeah, this is the end. What manner of man ought we to be? It's in the company. We should be the kind of man and the kind of woman that walk according to the law, the statutes, and the commandments of the most high young. One love, Zion. I got to go. I got to go. But the ends of the world is here. Shalom. I guess I went out of time. Come on back then. For the one million. Get your moving tonight. It's me to let the struggle go and fight. Loosen up your body's too tight. It's okay, it's alright. Here's a message from the 12 lost tribes. The phone can make a sad baby stop crying. You make fish without food, start frying. I know you like it, watch your hair and stop lying. I feel Keep good, the more your body just try. It's Looking! Okay. It's alright, y'all. Ah! Yeah. It's all right. For our redemption. Draw it nine. Yeah. yeah.